Hello everyone, Pro Drum Tech Kenny Sheritz here to discuss how to port a bass drum head. Now this topic has come up in discussion with me lately uh, due to the work I've been doing with the Breakbeats kit. It has a little 16 inch kick drum head and people want to know should I port it. Well in general, a drum this small, I like to keep the head full and complete. But not everyone has a Kelly Chu into your miking system or an old May EA miking system that you can mount to the inside of the bass drum. Most of the time drummers are going to be taking this into a club and wanting to use it. And so today we're going to discuss how to port a little 16 inch kick drum head. We'll be using a G1 Evans with the bass drum collar. Uh, Remo makes a Power Stroke 3 with the bass drum collar as well. I recommend getting a bass drum collar for your little bass drums. Uh, 18 and 16 inches, you need it because it makes the hoop center better. A tom head will do, but it's not really what you want. It's not gonna give you the tone and the bass drum sound you want. So let's start today talking about how we like to do this. And normally I like to use, uh, for example, aquarium port holes or Remo holes, this thin strip plastic with an adhesive backing acts as a mute and of course something to prevent the hole from tearing. You could put it right on the head, glue it on where you want, and you take an X-Acto knife and when it's glued on you don't have to worry about it moving, you just poke through the X-Acto knife and cut backwards against the thing and really kind of angle in. You don't want to angle out, angle out, you'll get a lot of little ridges and edges and you might tear through the head. Angle in and you get the support of that ring going around the drum. Now I like to put it on the inside myself so you can't see it and that way also if you do this it tends to make a smoother edge that looks nice and clean and lean on the outside. Today however we're going to be using a Drummo hole so I want a four inch hole on this little 16 inch head because it's small and I want to maximize the resonance. We're also using the uh, Drummo hole cutter uh, which I've used in a lot of instances, and I absolutely love this little tool. If I'm doing this, I don't really use it. I use the exacto knife, but when I'm doing this or just need to cut a hole, ain't nothing like it in the world. Now let's get to the process of it. Now I'm gonna put a little logo on this drum, so uh, sorry, Evans, I'm gonna cut the little logo off, but thank you for the drum head and for making one with a bass drum collar. So what I need to do with this hole cutter, the most important thing you wanna look at, especially when you're dealing with a drum head that's small, is can I turn all the way around? So you want to take a look. I'm going to start my center right about here. So I'm going to say, okay, that's about where I want that Remo hole. Does it cover out the little logo I want? Yes. Does it give me a little bit of edge without too much? Yes. I'm going to take a silver Sharpie. The reason I use a silver Sharpie is it's very invisible. You can barely see it. It's not like a pen mark or a black Sharpie. You just get a nice light wish of a circle on the inside of the head that nobody's going to see. Voila. Now take a look at that. You take a look at where you're going. And you say, okay, where's that circle centered? I want that center right about there. And my center, just about there. Maybe just a little bit off. Now you're eyeballing the center, but most people can get a general gist. And the way to back it up and double check it is to take this and again, make sure that you got clearance. So we should be about where we are. You want to take an eyeballs view and sure enough, I lined it up well. Now you have a circle with a dot in the center. You have a dot in the center with a blade. You want to line those two up. Now the most important thing is getting this, this little center piece centered along with the hole. Now I'm off a little bit on the center, so I'm going to double check and make sure I'm pretty much right in the middle and right where I want to be. Set that blade to it, and you want to push down on that little dot in the middle. I do mean push down. You want to hold it down because at this point in time, if you lift off in any way, shape, or form, the blade will disconnect from the head, and then you might not get an even cut. Next thing you want to do is firmly push the next blade through and begin to rotate. Now you'll notice that I'm kind of sitting on top of this hole cutter. That's because I do not want it to move in any way, shape, or form. I want to get a nice, beautiful circle that cuts evenly. There we go. Now, now we're through the mylar, actually the film, and booyah! Nice, perfectly round cut hole that this should fit nicely onto. Pop it out. Voila! Now, the beautiful thing about these holes is, unlike some of the other hole, little plastic hole adapters you have. This has an adhesive on it. So you can actually stick them together and they seem to sit nicely. So before you pull the adhesive, make sure that hole is sitting nicely. Make sure it's exactly where you want it is. Now, 
the thing you got to know about these is they have to lock together. So here's your front side. This is your front side piece. Again, you take off your stuff. Try not to touch any of the adhesive. And you want to line that up, kind of pop it right through the hole, and then turn this head over. Now, again, I recommend a clean surface, a nice soft surface that isn't scratch up your brand new front head. And get that bad boy right in there. And then we want to make sure it's nice and tight all the way around. Once we have that, I'm going to go ahead and turn this away from me, take this locking piece, and get ready to pop it in. Now, the key here I found with working with these is making sure that when you get it in that first slot, that you really kind of push it to the far side so you can lock that bad boy in. Now, you want to take your screwdriver, just kind of push it in until she locks. It can be a little bit of a difficulty sometimes, but once you get it under the lip, everything seems to fall into place. You just want to kind of go around it, lock her in, lock her in, lock her in. Now for me, I have strong hands. It was kind of easy to lock it in the first time, but you want to make sure it's good and in there. Now it may not seem like it's locking at first, but the more you get it around there, the more you realize it's locking in just fine. There we go. There we go. Pop that bad boy in and on. There we go. Nice, right under the lip. And now you hear that little bit of snap. That means she's locked and loaded. And we're ready to put a brand new front bass drum head on a little breakbeats kick drum. Cause I knew you